Swami, what does Vedanta stand for? Vedanta stands for harmony of all religions, all religions and valid paths for the realization of God. And does that mean that a person can practice Christianity or Buddhism or the end of Hinduism such as Vedanta is and get to the same place approximately? Uh, I say that a, a Hindu has to become a better Hindu, a Christian a better Christian, a Jew a better Jew. What do you mean by better Jew? That his mind should be turned to God in order to fulfill the purpose of life and the goal of our human existence. The fairest flower of a civilization is religion. Religion speaks in terms of being and becoming. So that every religion has a goal and a path. The path of religion is to be trodden by every spiritual aspirant. But the goal of religion is within the heart of the individual. When the individual feels the presence of God through his purity of heart, he has fulfilled the aim of life. So, Swami, are you talking about some kind of connection between a, a person and God that's, that's in their heart that they can uh, learn to realize? Oh, that uh, connection is there in a seed form. But the seed is to be watered into a plant. Plant must become a tree and it must produce fair flowers in the form of virtues like honesty, sincerity, justice and kindness and sympathy to all human beings. But the end or the fr fruit of this tree of life is direct experience of God in a state of consciousness which baffles understanding but it is valid and true because all great teachers of the world have realized God in a, an exalted state of consciousness. Is this God realization state of consciousness something an ordinary person could do? Yes, but the condition as I have said, purity of heart, as Christ has beautifully put it, blessed are the pure in heart, but they shall see God. What does it mean by purity of heart? Constant remembrance of God, forgetfulness of selfishness, and always thinking in terms of unselfish virtues which will ennoble man, deepen his spiritual consciousness and also bring closer and closer to, to the beloved Lord whom we adore and worship through different names and different forms but the reality is the same. As our Upanishadic teacher will say, truth is one, sages call it by various names. You've been a monk since the 1920s. Uh, do you think married people can realize God? Although I am a monk, I do not belittle the uh, householder's life. Monk or householder, and you both know? must move onward and forward and live a God-centered life and not a self-centered life. It is self-centered life which Christ called, uh, I, as I interpret it, called mammon. He cannot serve two masters, God and mammon. When you are self-centered, you are as it were, although mammon uh, literally means riches, but I will interpret it attachment to selfish interests and private gain and profit in this material and mundane world. In order to reach this exalted height of consciousness, we have to purify our heart so that we can always sing the glory of God and be an instrument in, in, in his hand to worship and serve every fellow human being as a symbol and expression of the divinity on earth. Swami, you actually met Sri Sarada Devi, the wife of Ramakrishna, who was the inspiration for your order. What was uh, she like? What was it like to meet her? We worship Sri Sarada Devi as the Divine Mother of the universe. Mm -hmm. He has taken a human form to teach us that God-realization is possible even for householders. Because Sri Ramakrishna to some extent appears to me that he was um, 
thinking in terms of monastic life. But the uh, Holy Mother's setup was domestic. Therefore, the call of duty is the song of householder's life. The call of renunciation is the song of monastic life. Uh, as a bird cannot fly if two wings are not very strong. Similarly, uh, monastic life as well as householder life are like the two wings of the birds. Uh, and a, a, a society which allows people to live a monastic life as well as householder life by fulfilling the command of God will be, serve the purpose of God in a most beautiful and a most dignified manner. Swami, I have heard Vedanta say truth is one and they talk about different religions being different paths up the mountaintop. What uh, can the religions do so they don't get mad at the other guy's paths? Oh, that is the unity in diversity. There will be diversity of paths, but unity of goal. As there will be many rivers coming from different mountains, but they must move towards the goal that the ocean of existence, knowledge and bliss absolute. So this harmony will come when we stick to our own faith, but have not tolerance, sometimes they use the tolerance, acceptance and respect of other faiths, which are also valid paths for the attainment of God vision. In this country, as you have got a beautiful symphony, similarly all religions must uh, play their mm. distinctive notes in order to create a divine symphony for refreshing our soul, for treating our mind and also in which our spiritual consciousness. Okay, Swami, thank you very much.